Don't you think, John? I, I do. I do think addition is important. That is one that probably you should brush up on. That is, if if addition uh, is <laughs> is a topic that you're struggling with, you're going to want to get that down before proceeding too far in data science. The calculus can wait a little. Yes. Yeah. So get your addition down, you know, maybe subtraction if you're really feeling it. But <laughs> uh, at least, so I would say, Honestly, like intro statistics, whatever you take in first year, the first couple courses enough to get you started. Like you don't have to go and try to deep dive into everything. If you want to be interested in machine learning, um, just get a general overview of how they work. It's not really necessary for to, for you to get all the exact details, at least for now. And then the third component in terms of business sense, um, it's this is what that's pretty interesting. I see a lot of data scientists who do a lot of projects that is that are very cool, but they don't actually do anything. Um, a very good example is someone goes like, oh, um, I'm going to like scrape Spotify uh, or something like that and then do an analysis. Like perhaps that could be useful. So maybe that's not the best example. But it's often like you don't think about <laughs> <laughs> about the business context. Like what, what's the problem you're trying to solve? What are you actually going to do? Um, because that's really important, right? Because whatever fancy thing that you do, if nobody cares about it, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how cool it is. Um, and then I also recommend an iterative approach. So get the basics down for all these things and then just start working on projects. And as you go, you're going to start having a lot of gaps in your knowledge. And then you can deep dive into these gaps and just work on more projects afterwards. I call this like a breath first approach for any of my CS nerds out there. Nice breath first approach. And yeah, a project based learning. I definitely highly recommend that just get your hands dirty. And yeah, I mean, you could teach yourself addition, for example, through programming. <laughs> Precisely. Like you're like, I forgot how to do addition. And then you're like, do addition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, experiment with that plus sign in the programming <laughs> language and see what happens. Well, so even for more complex math topics than addition, so for example, calculus, I, in 2020, I got really into relearning partial derivative calculus as it applies to gradients in machine learning. Um, so critical concept, a lot of machine learning algorithms learn with gradients and we need partial derivative calculus to make them happen. So I would simultaneously, I'd get out paper and pencil, and I would derive the partial derivatives of different machine learning cost functions. And then I would calculate, like I'd put in some dummy values, and then I would compute with my hand computed partial derivatives on paper. And then I would go to a Jupyter notebook and I would use PyTorch to differentiate the same equation automatically and make sure that I got the same numbers. So it was a really quick way to check that what I was doing by hand was right. And at that time, I didn't know PyTorch very well. So it was also an entry point for me to learn about PyTorch. So yeah, I don't know, there's kind of an example of how I think this project-based learning that you're describing uh, for learning any topic, including math and stats, is a really great idea. And then we can't forget about your your point about commercial and product acumen, this is so, so important to real world data scientists. Like the only place you can get away without that third point that you mentioned is uh, in academia. And even then you need to be usually coming up with grants that are relevant to something, <laughs> which is kind of a product acumen in a way. <laughs> 